All right, guys. So, talking about finding a number when we know the percent. All right. So, you guys are good with your algebraic problems, and that's kind of what part of today is. It's dealing with those and getting those ready. So, if we have like 5a plus 0 0.5 equals 2, we can solve that problem, right? Yeah. What do we have to do here? What would be the inverse operations that we need to be taking, we need to be jumping into? Ooh. What's that? Uh, no, we're going to have to do something before that, because remember, we go with working backwards, we got to work bottom up. All right? So if we're solving an equation, if we're going backwards... Uh, but except we're doing inverse operations, so we're not dividing it, we're... Subtract. Uh, we're gonna. I'm sorry, I have missed yours. Subtract 0 0.5. We did it on one side. We have to do it on the other side. Line up the decimals. Oh, 1.5. That equals 5a. Then what are we doing? Dividing. Dividing. Dividing by. Five. five. Which one? Five. Five. It's by the a. We got to divide by five. Divide by 5, and A equals 0 0.3. We're doing some stuff similar to this. On the top of your notes, on somewhere where you're going to see it, you need to know is means equal of means Multiply. Those are two things you got to know that will make today's lesson so much easier. The other thing I got to have you recall and kind of bring back from long ago is we can write percents like three different ways. If I have 50%, we'll start with that one. How can I write that as a decimal as a decimal what 0 0.5 so 0 0.5 and 50 percent of something are the same thing how can I write it as a fraction one half and that one half could have started out as 50 over 100 and you reduced it down right okay now percent smaller than 100 do you notice they're smaller than one so if you have a percent, it's going to be smaller than your total, okay? Because there's going to be two groups we're talking about. There's going to be the whole group. And then there's going to be the part of the group that represents the percent. Like if we think about our class. We have 24 students in our class. That's our whole group, right? If you take the whole group times, um, we don't know what, what percent, we don't know, and we get 16 students. Because there are 16 students in our class, right? That's a part of the whole, right? So there's going to be the whole group, and there's going to be the part, and then there's going to be the percent. Those are three things that we're going to have in every problem today. Are these two related? Yes. They are. Okay. Those two are related. Because whatever this percent, that's the number that represents it. Right? Okay. So how would I solve this problem? 24 times x is 16. What would I do to solve that problem? 24 times x equals 16. What do I do to figure out what the x is? This equation right here, guys. Dude, 24 divided by 24. All right, because that's multiplication. How do we undo it with division? Okay. And then you have to do the other, do the other side. Which is 0 0.6 repeating... 
But hold it. I said it was going to be a percent. It's 66%. Uh, 66.6%. Yeah, it's 66.6%. percent. Or if you write 66 and two thirds. So when we're finding a percent, do we have to turn our decimal back into a percent? We're going to. We're two thirds of the class, right? We're always going to have three things that we're looking for. This I would suggest having at the top two. We're going to have the whole amount. We're going to have a percent. And we're going to have a part. I It was 66%. Oh, that meant it was 16 of you guys. If I had 24 students... And I had 50%. Could I find out how many students that means? Yeah. So when we're working with percents, do we want to keep them as percents when we're working with them, or do we want to change them to decimals first or fractions first? When we're working with percents, you want to change them to decimals or fractions because then they become easier to work with. So we can think of it as 0 0.5 times 24. And that's going to equal 12. Well, isn't half of 12 24? Yes. They're going to give you equations like this. Then we are going to work to solve the parts. Well, you have to remember that percent, 50%, oh, that relates to the 12. Those are the same amount, right? Just one is as a percent, one is as the number from the group, right? What happens if I, oh, all of a sudden, I'm talking about the junior high, and we have 64 students. Is 50% of 64 different? Yeah. So would our number that represents the 50% be different? Yeah. That's what you got to remember. The percent will change if the numbers change. Well, the percent stays the same, but the number that represents the percent will change. Do you guys kind of get that? Does that make sense? Yeah. How are you feeling about that? All right, I'm seeing good nods. Now, what percent of 20 is 18? I'm going to use what I know. Is is an equal, right? We said that. Of is a what, Haley? Multiplication, right? Do we know the percent? So what can we represent that with? X. X. And a lot of people in my um, seventh grade class started doing it this way. When it was a percent, they put a P. So they remembered, oh, I got to change that into a decimal, or change that decimal into a percent. And if it was the other stuff, it would be an X. But or is it going to be any problem if you use it as an X all the time? No. Okay. All right. Do we know this twenty summer? And this 18, they're not going to change, right? So which is the whole and which is the part in here? Let me look at these. The whole, the okay. In this case, yes. It's not always going to be that the bigger number is the whole, but in this case it is, okay? Oh. So we're saying what percent of 20 is 18? But since we've got a nice, easy equation, can't we solve that, Natalie? What do we do? You do uh, divide by 18 over 18. No, I'm sorry, that's not correct. And that's where we get in the bad habits. We're always going to divide by the bigger no or smaller number. Now, what do we do? Um, I don't know. I have a question, but do you multiply? Are you going to be? Are we going to be multiplying for all of these? The equations are originally going to say multiplication, Lucas, because when you want Whatever that whole number is, you can take it times that percent or the decimal that represents that percent, and you'll get that number. Okay? okay. You're but 20 divided by 20. All right. So we always have to remember, Natalie, we've got to look at the side with the variable. Oh, that's the variable. How do I undo the division, right? Okay? Divide by 20. All right. And if we do 18 divided by 20, we're going to get 0 0.9. 
All right, that won't go there, 0 0.9. But since it's a percent, do we want to write it down to 0 0.9? No, what do we want to write it down as? 90%. Do you guys remember how to change it to a percent from a decimal? Is that coming back, Anthony? What's that? Mostly, yeah. Yeah, okay, good, good, good. I just couldn't tell. I was having trouble reading it with the glasses and then the, the mask. It gets hard. All right, so 90%. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, as we look at this one, what would the equation be? Can somebody tell me? Keep it as easy as you can. P times 400 equals 50. Oh. All right. Very good. What do I do, Michaela, then, to get to my what my percent is? How do I go about solving this equation? All right. So divide by 400 and 50 divided by 400, right? It is kind of important with division. Remember, order does matter. Because we're going to get a number smaller than 1 now, right? And that's kind of what we want if we're changing something to a percent. That doesn't always have to be the case, but we could. All right? So 50 divided by 400. All right? It will not go in there. Don't forget your decimals where you have these zeros. It'll go into there. Oh, is that 8 times 4? That's 48. No, 8 times 4 is 32. Ooh. All right. It'll go in there one time. Mr. Palm is losing his mind. All right. 400. All right. That's okay. And then 1,000, it'll go into there. 400 will go to 1,000 twice, right? That'll be 800. That's 2,000 then. Oh, 2,000, it'll go into five times. Oh, 0 0.125, or 125,000. Okay, is that what our answer is? No. No, we want to find the, what is the percent, Haley? 125? 125%, so 50 is bigger than the 400? No. How many places we move the decimal, Taylor, or not Taylor, Tori? Twice. Twice, so not 125, but what, Haley? 12.5. 12.5. And that's that's an important thing that we're taking a lot of extra time because it's easy to forget. To change it into a percent, it moves twice. 12.5 is ours. All right? So they literally tell us what to do, and then we can use the equation. Soon you'll be getting word problems where you got to put stuff in these equations. So Trenton, this one's a little bit different. The form's different. What equation am I going to write out for this? Use our is and of clues. Um, Where do I put the P? Um, that's the first one. P goes right in there? No, I don't know. Hang on. Did, did you see how? All right. Uh, okay. Oh, P, we didn't know a percent of... 400. I just wrote the stuff below. Follow that kind of there. So what are we going to do with the 9? Um, the, the nope. The 9 is going to stay right there. What is is? Uh, is is what? Equals. Equals. All right. So we put an equal sign in there. What percent? We don't know the percent, so that's where we write the... We don't know what this is, do we? So what are we going to put in place of it in our equation? A P. A P, because that's what we don't know, right? Uh, oh, there we write our multiplication, right? 27. Is that still an equation? Yeah, and I'm going to write it up here. 9 equals P times 
27. We still have our whole, right? We still have our part, and then we'll still have our percent that represents that, right? Does it matter what order the equation's written in? If the equals is on the left or on the right? If I flip these, oh. That's the same exact equation now, isn't it? Exactly the same. But they chose to write it differently because is every situation going to come up exactly the same way? No. So they're trying to make you think through it. All right. So summer as 9 equals p times 27, how do I go about solving that one? All right. Very good. Very good. And that comes down to 1 third equals p. And the reason I put 1 third, that'll kind of give us a key. Hopefully that triggers something in our memory. Oh, that would be completely fine. All right. 9 divided by 27, that is completely and utterly perfect. That is another way to do it. Okay. So 9, 27 won't go into that. It'll go into 93 times. 81. Ooh, we're going to have three repeating, aren't we? Is that what you were getting? Yeah. Okay. So. Hmm. But is that the percent we want? That's a decimal still, Bruce. So, what per Oh, Lucas is all gung ho on these. What is the percent then, Lucas? It's 33.3%. 33.3%. Do you see how Lucas got to the percent, guys? Does that make sense? Because there could be three threes there, right? The reason I did it this way, and I'm going to highlight this, is the way Summer did it perfectly great and wonderful? Yes. It's exactly what you needed to do, exactly following that pattern. But I saw one-third. What does one-third represent always and every time? It's always going to represent what percent? That should have kind of set off the bells. Oh, that's 33 and a third percent, right? Okay, because one-third is 33 and a third percent. Two-thirds is 66 and two-thirds percent, right? So those, if you can start to know those fractions and what percents they represent, that can be quicker than... The division. Will the division get you there every time? Yeah. So does it matter if you divide? No. I was just kind of trying to step into a shortcut. All right. I like exactly what she did. What Summer did, excuse me. Okay. Okay. So what about this one then, Christine? Would you set that one up? 25 equals P times 4. 25 equals, we don't know the percent, so P of means times 4. All right, Bruce, what do I do here, sir? Online, we'll be coming to you sec in a second. All right, now we're looking at this 25 side. Is it going to variable by it? No. Now, some of us get caught up in, oh, it's on the left, I can do this. Or, so we always got to look. What's by the variable, Bruce? <clears throat> Four. Okay. So what do we do? All right. Four divided by four. If we did it on one side, we got to do it on the. Ah. Uh, all right. Other side. Okay. So what goes inside the house? That's for anybody, not just Bruce. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. That top number, the numerator, twenty-five. Divided by 4. I'm going to throw you off now. Well, will 25 go into 4, or 4 go into 25? Yeah. 4 go into 25 6 times? 24. That's a 1. Oh, I'm going to put a 0 out here. I'm going to put my decimal in. I go in there twice. That's an 8. That's a 2. Put my 0 out here. 6.25. But we're looking for a percent. So how do we change 6.25 into a percent? Twice. So what would it be, 6.25? <laughs> Jacob's exact there. How can a percent be bigger than 100? Is that possible? A lot of extra right. 25 is what percent of 4? So here's what happened in this problem, Jacob. Come on up here. All right. Huh. I said, I've got four cookies. I'm so lucky. Jacob goes, I've got 25 cookies. 
Well, he's got six times plus a little bit more than mine, right? Oh, six times, 600%, right? Every four is 100%, isn't it? So when we do that division, Jacob has 625% of what I've got, right? You see that? He has, oh, four, eight, 12, 16, then 20, then 24. That's 600%, right? And then there's one more cookie that he has. Well, one over four, is that 25%? Six hundred and twenty-five percent. He's got six hundred and twenty-five percent more cookies than I've got. I'm a little bit jealous. All right. Do you see how you can have a percent bigger than that? All right. That's how those situations come. Up. Oh, I've got four of them. Say, I got twenty-five. Yes, Bruce. Oh, okay. All right. Just want to make sure. Now, that's why we've always got to be careful. We always got to look by what's the variable, right? And that indicates what we've got to do. Because then we got to solve for those different things. All right? Well done. Problem of the day we're going to go through quickly. We're going to learn to find a number when the percent is known. We can really find any of the three. As long as we have two of the three, we can find the other ones, right? But today we're focusing on when we know the percent. The Megalodon, there's a scientific name. A giant shark that became extinct almost 3 million years ago had teeth as large as 7.25 inches along an edge. So when you have the shark's tooth, they're going to measure along the edge. It's 7.25 inches. It's about from my fingertips to here. That's a pretty good size tooth, isn't it? So the tooth is literally the size of my hand, or probably a little bigger. This is 240% bigger than the largest teeth of a modern great white shark. When one number is known and the relationship to another number is given, by a percent, the other number can be found. This equation, we're going to use all day. This equation you want to have written out. Whole times the percent equals our part. Alright. And I like to put part that part that represents The percent, right? The part that represents. The hardest part for most people is figuring out what is what. The percent, that's pretty easy, generally. Well, what's the percent from this problem, guys and gals? Okay, so 240%. So I can put that in the middle, 240%. Before I work with it, I'm going to have to change it to a decimal, right? That's an important thing to know. Because anytime we work with a percent, you want to change it to the decimal or a fraction. And usually the decimals are easier for some people. So that should be right up your alley, Natalie. All right? Now, we've got 3 million, and we've got 7.25 inches. Which one is an important number here, and which one is just kind of an extra number they threw in here to maybe throw us off? You have it? Yes, which one's important? Okay, because the 7.25, that's going to help us find out how big the other tooth is, right? How big the shark's teeth are today. 7.25 along an edge. This is 240% bigger than the largest teeth of modern shark. So, is this 240% representing... That's 7.25? Is it so that 7.25? Is that the part or is that the whole? That's going to be the question. And what we've got to ask ourselves do these two have a connection? Is that 240%? Is it the same thing as that 7.25 inches? 
Would a 7.25 inches be a part? The 7.25 inches yeah. is a part in this one. Because do you see how, oh, 240% of the great white's teeth, do we know the size of the great white's teeth? Is this. Oh, that's why the 7.25 is that. So great white's teeth times 240% is 7.25. So is the great white's teeth bigger or smaller? Smaller. smaller. That makes sense because if I take it times 240% or 2.4, right, we're going to get a bigger one. And it was kind of indicating here, 7.25 is 240%. So let's go ahead and get their equation there. Oh, whoops. So I'll write it up here. What should I do then on this situation, Natalie? Because you're very good. So first of all, the percent. How should I write the percent? Um, what I did is I just divided... 7.25 by um, 2.4. That's exactly right. But here's why she did that, as she can sort that out in her mind. That's great for her. So you change that to the decimal first, right, folks? Do you see that? You're going to change that to the decimal. Okay? We got the rest of the equation the same. Then Natalie saw, oh, this is by the x. I'm going to divide by 2.4. Divide by 2.4 x equals, anybody have that out there? Three inches. Three inches. Does it make sense that today's great white shark teeth are smaller than the megalodons? Yes. Yeah. All right. 240% bigger. So a 20-foot shark, 240% of that, whoo, that good shark gets pretty good size, almost 100 feet long. All right. Can you imagine that? 100 feet. This room is 30 feet across. So the right. shark would be bigger than this room. Right. The gym? Um, it's The basketball court is 94 from one end line to the other. So we could almost lay the shark down in that room. <laughs> right. All right. What's yeah. that? Yeah, I'm going to be Jesus. I'm going to start Jesus. All right. So now we get back to these. And online, I'm sorry. Carson, do you think you could write up the equation for me or tell me what the equation is? Uh, um. Just go ahead and use what's up there, bud. So as we go left to right, what do we do with the 60s? It's just equals. Okay, 60, we bring it down. Equals, right? Then what, bud? 12 times N. Okay, you either got to say 12% or a lot of people in their first step, instead of writing it as 12%, they're going to write it as 0 0.12. A percent, when we're working with those, we've always got to change them to a... Decimal. Decimal. Okay. So Carson, either write it as the twelve percent, and then what number? Sixty okay. is twelve percent of what number? Ooh. Now I have a question. From the way this is written, is the sixty that part that represents the percent, or is it the whole big group? The whole big group. Oh, it's the part. It's the part. Okay. 60 is 12%, right? Yes. So of what number? So the number is going to be a lot bigger, isn't it? Yes. Because if 60 is 12%, well, 12 is like 10%, and 10% would be one-tenth of it, right? All right. So how do I go about solving this then, Carson? Divide by 0 0.12. Yep, divide by 0 0.12. Doing the work will be easy for most of you. Hey, there's Slim Jimmy. All right, we're going to only get through one lesson today, and his friend's going to be coming here quick. All right. It is, I believe, 500. Okay. So, 60 divided by 0 0.12. All right. 1, 2. 
one, two. It'll go in there five times, fill in the zeros, one, two. It is 500, right? 60%. Is that about 10%, which what 12 is, of 500? Yeah, that is. So does that make sense? Yeah. So 60 is the part, and 500, does that make sense as being the whole group? Yeah. Yeah. So if we said we had 500 kids in our school, and 60 of them were in the band, well, 12% 12 of them would be in the band, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Figuring out what the part is, figuring out what the hole is. Carson, you did a good job. All right? Most of them are set up like this, but there's some word problems, and those are the ones that we're trying to understand. So we've got their steps. Oh, they did exactly what Carson did. Notice they change it to that. They put N, which if there's no N there, that means multiplication, right? Right, right, Trenton? Okay. So then we divided, like you said, we got 500. And that's what we have our answer as. Okay? This one. All right? What will be the equation there, Trenton? Then, Daniel, I'm coming to you for the next one. Taylor and Connor, I haven't forgot about you. Don't make it hard. Numbers come straight down. Use those keywords I gave you. So what does the 75 do? It comes straight down, right? 75? What's the next word? Tell me. Um, equals. 75 equals 25%. When I bring that down, how should I bring that down? Um, that's, the that's the percent, yep. So, and when we're working with the percent to do math with it, we don't want to leave it as a percent. We always want to change it to a decimal. Decimal. So what was 25% be as a decimal, Trent? 0 0.25, yep. All right, what's this tell us? Um, multiply. multiply. What number? Do we know that? No. Okay. 75 is 25% of what number? Is the 75 the part or is it the whole? In this one? Part. It's the part. It's the number that represents the percent. That's what we're going to be trying to distinguish. What represents the percent? All right, very good. So we're here. Trenton, you got that one set up for me then? Bruce, what do I do now, sir? Uh, divide 0 0.25 by 0.25. Right, wonderful job, sir. 0 0.25 divided by 0 0.25. And I think I'm going to get 300 as my answer. So 0 0.25. No, I did it backwards. Uh, 75, 0 0.25. All right, 25, that's 1, 2, 1, 2. Sorry about the terrible penmanship. That's 3 hundo red. All right. Oh, the 25%. Isn't that 1 fourth? 75, 150. 225, 300. Oh, does that make sense that it's 4 times bigger than 75? You see what's happening there, guys? All right. So they've been giving us the part that represents the percent. We've been finding what the original number is. Natalie has 75% of the total M&Ms in the class, or 25% of the total M&Ms in the class. She has 75. That means she's hidden almost. She's kept 75, and she's hidden 225 of them around the room. Go look for them. Seems like a thing to do. Go look for the No, nobody's looking for them. All right. So we've got these. The equations really are that easy to set up. All right, Daniel, after we get through this one, you ready, sir? All right. Oh, Daniel's not on there? No, I'm in my new He's online, though. I'm just used to, like, hearing him right away. Daniel, are you muted still, sir? I'm here. He's here. All right, wonderful. Now, Daniel, you get the first word problem. All right, lucky you, right? We have the whole. Why don't everybody go ahead and write out the whole? Times the percent. Equals the part. And that part is represented by 
So now Daniel's got to figure out, and he can rely on you guys or ask for help from the audience online. Anna earned 85% on a test by answering 17 of the questions correctly. If each question was worth the same amount, how many questions were on the test? So, Daniel, what do you know from the word problem there? 85 is the percent. 85 is the percent. All right, is it all right if I write it as 0 0.85? Yes. All right, so then I wrote in my multiplication. Now he's gonna see, is 17 that number that's representing the 85% or is that the whole test? Which one, Daniel? Uh, the 17 is the part. It's the part, because that's the part he got right, right? Do we know how many questions are on the whole test, Trenton? Uh, I do. No. You do already? All right, good. So we don't, so we can write it, represent that with an X. All right, then, Daniel, you did a wonderful job setting it up. What do I do here to get to the next step, Daniel? Um, 0 0.85 divided by 17. Ah, uh, no, not quite, Daniel. So we have the 0 0.85 by the X, so what do we divide it by? 0 0.85. Yes, sir. All right, 0 0.85. And then if we did that on one side, what do we do on the other side? Divide it. By 0 0.85, right? And Haley, when we did that, what did we get? I got 20. You got 20 questions. Well, and you know how you can check that out? 17 over 20 on the test. So 17 divided by 20. 17 will go, or 20 will go into 17 zero times. It'll go into there um, eight times. That's 160. There's 100. It'll go in there five. Oh, 0 0.85. Is 17 out of 20 and 85%? Yes. Yes, it is. All right. Oh. Daniel, very good job deciding that. Oh. The 85% represented the 17 question. That's my part. Okay. So if that number represents that percent, that's the part. I need an honest assessment here. You can put it in the chat, people online. How do you feel about, and if you want to just do it in front of your chest, how do you feel about figuring out which one's the part and which one's the whole? How do you feel about that? Five is I got it great. One is I don't got it at all. All right. All right. Very good, very good. All right, you guys are feeling pretty good about it. So choose a number with the whole problem. All right. They set up. All right. They write it out in words. I think using that whole times the percent equals the part. Okay. Here's the proportion. 85 is two. Okay. There we go. They're ready to solve it. 85 times n equals okay. So they've done this. Why are they doing all this stuff with the 100? Because did they change the percent to 0 0.85? We did. That's like dividing by 100, right? So that's why they have an extra 100 in there. Okay. When they do that division, they're going to get the same exact answer as us of 20. So originally when Daniel said 0 0.85, he did the division by 100, and that's where that extra 100 is coming from, okay? So exact, what we did is perfect, okay? Because you guys know that. All right, so now we're up, Lucas. All right, then Taylor, I'm going to come to you for the next one, and then Connie, you got the last one. Tom earned 80% on the test. He got a B minus, all right? By answering 20 questions correctly. Is it just the same as the last one? It looks very similar, doesn't it? If each question was worth the same amount, how many questions were there? So I've always got, and I always go back to my whole times my percent equals my part. I still always think of it this way when I'm doing percents. All right. Do you know from the equation? The percent is 80. 80. So how would I write that if I'm going to be working with it? 0 0.8. 0 0.8. Does it hurt anything if I put an extra zero on it? Do I have to have the extra zero there? And since Lucas is in charge of this problem, we're just going to put the 0 0.8, because that's what he said. Then I know there's multiplication and equal sign. All right. Then that 20, is that representing 
the 80% that I got correct, or is that representing the whole amount of problems on the test? The whole amount of problems on the test. There are 20 whole problems on the test? All right. And we don't know what part 80% is. Okay. Tom earned an 80% on the test by answering 20 questions correctly. The 80% was what he got correct, right? How many questions did he get correct? 20. Oh. Yeah, Do you I see that? Say. Okay. All right. Good. 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 Don't worry. This is the hardest part. Figuring out what. Look at. Figuring out what the part is and what that is. That's the hardest part of this all. So twenty was the questions he got right. Eighty percent was what he got right. So those are the same thing. We've got the whole number here. What do we do then, um, Natalie? Uh, you divide uh, zero point eight over zero point eight and twenty over zero point eight. Oh, very good, very good. And when we do that, what do we get, Haley? I keep getting zero point zero four. You get zero point zero four. I think I'm doing it backwards somehow. Oh, so put twenty in divided by point eight. Okay. So it was good that you realized that didn't make sense, and you can always flip that around. All right. So with what we got going on, oh, does a 25 or a 20 out of 25, does that look like 80%? That's one fifth, right? Or four fifths. That is 80%. You could always check that back up. All right. How are we feeling about this, Summer? Are you feeling? Yeah. The word problems are kind of the scary part, right? But I think if you can, you guys all can use this, the whole times the percent times the part. Glory. Go good. All right. All right. Good. 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 All right. I like percents. Some people just loathe them, and I can understand that. Everybody thinks a little bit differently. So they set up their equation. They're doing their work. Remember how we changed it to zero point eight? They didn't, so they put a hundred in there to represent that percent. All right. Now, let's flip the script. We're coming to you, right, Taylor? Yep. All right. When a giraffe is born, it's approximately 55% as tall as it will be as an adult. If a baby giraffe is 5.2 feet tall when it is born, how tall will it be when it is a full grown? All right, I'm going to come back to my whole times my percent equals my part. What do you know, Taylor? Um, I think 55 is the percent, so it would be 0 0.55. Okay. And then 5.2 feet tall is the part because it's just when it like was born oh. and then x is the whole so 55 percent was when it was born 5.2 feet was when it was born do you see how both of them are when they were born oh so they're representing the same thing right the adult height is what we don't know right okay all right and going from there gavin what do we do to solve sir Okay. Okay. All right. So Connor, you're the only one online that I gotta get yet. And what do we get then when we have a calculator person doing that? Nope. Now, no, it makes doesn't make sense to do it. You gotta put the top number inside. Five point two divided by zero point five five. 9.45 repeating. 9. 9.45 to the nearest tenth. So 9.5 then after we do that. All right. So we would almost double it because 55 is a half, right? So it would be almost 10. Is that almost 10? Yeah. That makes sense, doesn't it? All right. Good detail catching Christine with nearest tenth of a foot. So four or five would round to 
uh, or 9.5. Okay, good job. So they must be talking about a different type of giraffe than us. All right, they do all their work, they set it up, and they get 9.5 approximately. Okay. So Connor's there. All right. A fisherman caught a lobster that weighed 11.5 pounds, Connor. Big lobster. It's like a, oh, that's a giant one. This was 70% of the weight of the largest lobster that that fisherman had ever caught. What was the weight to the nearest tenth of a pound of the largest lobster the fisherman had ever caught? So let's get our hole going, Connor. Let's get our Times our percent equals our part. All right, Connor, what do you know? Percent's going to be 0 0.7. Okay, so we're going to write it as a decimal. I like that. Thank you. Now, this one is worded quite funnily. It's funny worded, wording. All right, what I want you to do right now is everybody, before Connor makes his prediction. Tell me if this is just put a W on your paper or put a P on your paper or if you want to put it in the right whatever place you think. Do you think this is the part or the whole? Or what? Do you think the 11.5 is the part that represents 70% or is it the whole? All right. Everybody take an estimation of guess. So kind of they're all going to be in the same boat you're in. What do you think, Connor? I think 11.5 is going to be the whole. So he thinks the whole? All right. 11.5 is the whole. What do you say, Corey? What, what was your estimation? I said the part. She said the part. What about you, Gavin? He said the whole. All right. What about you, Natalie? Um, I think it's... She thinks it's the part. What about you, Haley? Whole. She says the whole. Christine? Part, Jacob? Part. Lucas? Part. Summer? Part. She said the whole art. Right. Michaela? Part. Part. Bruce? Part. Whole? Jenton? She said the whole. What about online? Daniel, what'd you say? Whole. Taylor, what'd you say? Whole. Right, and what did you say, Carson? Part. Part. We're pretty split down the middle. 11.5 was, was is another form of, is, isn't it? 11.5 is 70% of the biggest he's ever caught. So is this the biggest he's ever caught? No, the biggest he ever caught is the whole. So the 11.5 is the part, and we don't know the biggest he's ever caught, but will we very soon? Okay. So what do we do to solve this then, Trenton? <laughs> then x equals, Haley? We're going to get you to put these in here correctly, yeah. Uh, 16.42. 16.0. And it, it goes to the 10th now, 16.42, so that'd be 16.4. That is a ginormous lobster, isn't it? All right. It's almost a megalodon lobster. Okay. So, what got you confused, people that thought it was a whole, or was it really more of a guess? The part where it says, like, what was the weight to the like the end of it? All right. So, yeah, that's there. But that seventy percent. This is eleven point five zero. So this isn't the biggest one ever. That seventy percent is representing that eleven point five pounds. All right. And as they kind of go through it, we've got all this work. They do it our way this time. Sixteen point four. Now we're going to try to do it on our own, okay? 
So online, I'm trusting you that you're doing it. If you're not, well, it's your decision you're making. Poll times the percent equals the part. Okay. Amy caught a fish that weighed 15.5 pounds. That's a big fish. All right. This was 85% of the largest fish that Amy had ever caught. What was the weight of the to the nearest pound, tenth of a pound of the largest fish Amy had ever caught? Okay. So go ahead and write down what you know. I imagine everybody's going to get, be able to get to this point. So I'm going to go ahead and take a chance and write this down. Now we gotta figure out, is this fish, that 15.5 pounds, does that represent the 85%? Or is it representing the whole? What part? I say P for part. P for part is what you just said. Okay. What about you, Jacob? Part or whole? Yep. It says part. What about you, Christine? Part. Part? Natalie? Part. Is it too dim or what? Hmm. All right, Tori? Part. All right, Bruce? Part. Part. This is the part because that's the 85% of the biggest one he's ever caught. Or she's ever caught, excuse me. So we've got to go ahead and do that division. How do we go ahead and do that um, to get the answer then, uh, Taylor? Um, it would be 0 0.85 divided by 0 0.85, and then you do 15.5 divided by 0 0.85. All right, and what do we get, anybody? Uh, I get 8.2 feet. 8.2 feet. 18. 18.2 feet. 18. Point two, three repeating, so it would go 18.2 if we round it to the 10. Now, does it make sense that this other fish is going to be a little bit bigger than that one? This is 85% of it, so the 100% is going to be bigger than that, so that makes pretty good sense. I'm getting close to my personal best. Okay. Yeah, I caught a bluegill version of that. Yeah. A bluegill version of that. Yeah, you did have that ginormous bluegill, and yeah. your little trace had, or trace had a little bitty one. Yeah. All right, so we do the division. 18.2. All right. Ooh, now we're going to change up the wording on you. Here we go again. We get the whole times the percent equals the part. When Bart was 12, he was approximately 85% of the weight he is now. If Bart was 120 pounds, how heavy is he now to the nearest tenth of a pound? Yes, ma'am. Who names their child Bart? Bart Simpson. Yeah, Bart Miller. You have Bart Simpson. Like Bart Miller lives here in town. But that was before the Simpsons show. So I'm going to assume you guys can get the percent part, 0 0.85. Now you get to decide, am I dealing with the part or the whole for that 120? Because the 12, is that really important? Is the 12 important? No, it's just his age. It's kind of giving you a timeline. Hmm. If Bart was 120 pounds, what is he now? Summer, what do you think? Is it the part of the whole? I'm going to say the part. Okay, what about you, Gavin? What do you think? Part or the whole? Yeah. Part. And Michaela? Part. Part. All right. So they're all saying part here. When he was 12, he was 85% of the weight he was now. When he was 12, he was 120 pounds, right? They're both dealing with that same, same time frame. So we were able to find his weight out now by doing what, Christine? 
What's that? 14 pounds now. I think he's got a decimal. 141. So should he weigh more now? Yep. If he was 85%, he should weigh a bit more now. Okay. That's like when we did the biggest loser here at school. What? We did, or the staff did. And I weigh a lot different than what Miss Jessica weighs, right? So if I weigh 200 pounds and she only weighs 100 pounds, if she loses 5 pounds, that's 5% uh, of her weight. I have to lose 10 pounds for it to be 5% of my weight. So they do percent of loss, and that is a way to compare different amounts in an equal way. Okay? So we set that up pretty good. You guys think you're ready to try some? Yes. All right, good. All right. So... These are all saying the same thing. They're just don't think you're smart enough to realize, oh, how do I set up the equations? You guys know how. I trust in you. I believe you. Um, Corey, get that green stuff off my desk, and you can do that. 